Trick or Treat It was Halloween, and Pooh and Piglet were busy carving jack-o'-lanterns. I'm not going trick-or-treating this year, Pooh, announced Piglet. I'm too scared. What is there to be afraid of? asked Pooh. We'll only be seeing our friends. Well, what if a costume has a heffalump hiding under it instead of a friend? answered Piglet. Why, I'll be with you, Piglet, replied Pooh. Look, he said, pointing to a book he had been reading. I thought of a costume we can wear together. We'll go trick-or-treating dressed as a totem pole. All right, sighed Piglet, as Pooh got together the pieces of their costume. I'll go, but only if you promise to run if you see a heffalump. I promise, said Pooh. He lifted Piglet onto his shoulders and arranged the costume so they would be a totem pole with two faces. The two of them headed for Rabbit's house. Oh dear, Piglet whispered as they passed Rabbit's garden. Something's hiding in the corn stalks. Don't worry, replied Pooh. That's just a scarecrow, not a scare piglet. Pooh and Piglet hurried up to Rabbit's door. Happy Halloween, Pooh cried. Trick or treat. No one answered. Oh, bother, said Pooh. Rabbit's not home. Next, Pooh and Piglet went to Kanga's house. Pooh knocked on the door and cried, Happy Halloween! Trick or treat! Again, no one answered. Oh, bother, said Pooh. Kanga's not home either. As Pooh and Piglet headed down the path, a white figure flew toward them, shrieking. Oh! Pooh! cried Piglet. It's a ghost! Run! Holding tightly to Piglet, Pooh ran as fast as he could. He dashed behind a tree and peeked out at the ghost. The white thing trashed around for a few minutes, then suddenly it untangled itself. Tigger! Pooh exclaimed. Tigger frowned. Who are you? he asked. And what are you? It's me, said Pooh. And me, added Piglet. We're a totem pole. Tigger scratched his head. He had never seen a totem pole before, but he was very pleased when Pooh invited him to go trick or treating. You can dress up as a ghost, Pooh suggested. But if you see a heffalump anywhere, you must promise to tell us, Piglet insisted. The friends hurried onto Eeyore's place. As they approached, they saw that his little twig house was covered with cobwebs. Ooh, huge spiders, said Piglet shivering. Don't go any closer. Then, out of the shadows, a voice called. And why not? A heffalump, cried Pooh. Where? yelled Tigger. Run, squeaked Piglet. Oh well, said Eeyore, peering around the corner. No one ever sticks around, naturally. Not even the spiders who made these cobwebs. When he recognized Eeyore's voice, Pooh stopped. We came to see you, he said. Would you like to come trick-or-treating with us? Can't, Eeyore said gloomily. Don't have a costume. Hmm, said Pooh. Well, 
If you rolled around in these cobwebs, you would look just like a mummy, Tigger said. Here, buddy boy, let me help. When Eeyore was ready, the whole gang headed down the path. Suddenly, four strange shapes ran out of the trees. Have alarms, shouted Tigger. Run, cried Piglet. Then the smallest shape squealed. Look, Mama, we scared them. Pooh halted in his tracks. Roo, he said. The four strange shapes removed their masks, and there were Roo, Kanga, Rabbit, and Owl. We tricked them, Mama. We tricked them, Roo squeaked happily. Yes, dear, Kanga replied. Now let them catch their breath, then we can all go to Al's house for some treats. Well, Piglet, what did I tell you, Pooh said as the friends walked toward Owl's house. There was nothing to be afraid of. All we've seen are our friends this Halloween. I'm glad, Pooh, Piglet said. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you too, Piglet, Pooh replied. Barney's trick or treat. Baby Bob and BJ are so excited. It's Halloween. They look through Barney's big costume chest, searching for just the right costumes to wear trick or treating. Let's find something really fun to wear, suggests Barney. This is fun, says BJ. I'm a superhero. And I'm a bumblebee, buzzed Baby Bob happily. And I'm a super de duper scarecrow, adds Barney. I can't wait to get lots of treats, exclaims Baby Bob. Yeah, let's visit lots of houses, agrees BJ. Except maybe that spooky old house at the end of the street. Trick or treat, shout Baby Bob and BJ. They receive many sweet surprises from friendly neighbors. Scooter the puppy wants to trick or treat too. Baby Bob says, no Scooter, you can't come with us tonight. Let go of my bag. But Scooter has accidentally bitten a hole in Baby Bob's bag. Baby Bob doesn't see the treats falling out as she runs to catch up with Barney and BJ. By the time Baby Bob discovers the hole in her bag, she has lost all her treats. My bag is empty, she sighs sadly. We have one more house to visit, says Barney. Cheer up, maybe you'll get something nice there. That house looks sort of spooky, says BJ. Let's go home, and I'll share my treats with you, sissy. Follow me, says Barney. I think you'll be surprised. BJ is a little frightened when they arrive at the door of the old house. G go ahead, sissy. You say it. N no, BJ, whispers baby Bob. You say it. Don't worry, says Barney. I'll say it. Then he shouts, trick or treat. Suddenly, the door creaks open scaring Baby Bob and BJ a little. But then they recognize their neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Together, Baby Bob and BJ shout, Happy Halloween! Mrs. Brown gives Baby Bob a new bag and fills it with Halloween treats. Every Halloween, the children think our old house looks spooky, sighs Mr. Brown, and no one comes to trick or treat. So, we have lots to give you, laughs Mrs. Brown. 
It's nice to have friends like you visit. I thought that spooky old house would be a trick, says BJ. But it turned out to be a great big treat, chuckles Barney. Monsters Inc. Scariest Day Ever Monsters Inc. Scariest Day Ever James P. Sully Sullivan and his best friend Mike Wazowski were on scare duty at Mount Monsters Inc. Sully stepped through a door and looked around. There was no one there. Uh, Mike, Sully said, poking his head back through the door. This room's empty. What are you talking about? Mike said, shoving past Sully into the room. This kid's always asleep by now. Sully shrugged. I guess we should go back to Monstropolis. I've got lots of other kids to scare tonight. But as Sully turned toward the door, his tail knocked it shut. Meanwhile, on the scare floor, George Sanderson and his right-hand man, Charlie, were working the same neighborhood as Mike and Sully. They saw an activated door, but no one appeared to be manning it. Uh, Charlie said when he saw the unmanned door. Looks like Mike and Sully accidentally left this one on. We'd better turn it off, George said. It isn't safe to leave a door to the human world active. Back in the human world, Sully reopened the closet door. But when he did, all he saw was the inside of the closet. The door back to the scare floor isn't working, said Sully. We're going to f have to find another house with a working door. And fast! Mike and Sully crept through the house and stepped outside. Remember, Sully said, don't touch anything. Mike nodded. All the monsters knew humans were toxic. But as he looked around, he realized he didn't see any humans. Instead, the streets were full of monsters. What's going on? Mike asked, scratching his head. Are we back in Monstropolis? Suddenly, Mike and Sully heard a voice behind them. They spun around. A small monster was standing there, peering up at them. I like your costumes, she said, before running off. Mike and Sully looked at each other. Costumes? What could possibly be going on? Mike and Sully looked back at the street. There weren't only monsters walking around. They also saw a ghost, a black cat, a pumpkin with legs, and all kinds of other creatures. Suddenly, one of the monsters pulled off its face. Mike and Sully gasped. It wasn't a monster after all. It was a child wearing a mask. They weren't back in Monstropolis. They were surrounded by human children wearing disguises. Sully did his best to stay calm. We have to find a door back to Monsters, Inc. Now, he said. George is working this neighborhood tonight, too, Mike said. If we can catch one of his doors in time, we can get back through. Mike and Sully tried to find a way inside one of the nearby houses, but it wasn't easy. They had to dodge children left and right, and there were people at the front doors of almost all the houses. Mike and Sully managed to sneak into a few houses, but none of the doors inside were powered up. In one house, they got to the bedroom just as George was leaving. George! Mike and Sully shouted, raising for the open closet door. Wait for us! But they weren't fast enough. George hadn't heard them. 
Click. The door closed behind him. Mike and Sully opened the closed door, but there was no scare floor behind it, just a closet filled with children's clothes. Mike and Sully were beginning to worry. They needed to get back to Monstropolis before one of those kids touched them. It is getting late, Mike said. Do you think any of the doors back to the scare floor are still in use? I sure hope so, Sully said. Then Mike and Sully noticed the house, but no one around. The front door was flung wide open. Maybe this was their ticket home. Come on, let's go, said Sully. Mike and Sully tiptoed inside the house. But as they crept toward the door, they heard sounds of talking and laughter. The house wasn't empty like they thought. Oh no, Sully said when he realized what was going on. We're in the middle of a party, Mike exclaimed. Whoa, said someone behind Mike and Sully. The two spun around. A boy stood there, staring at them. Cool Halloween costumes! Mike and Sully slowly began to back away. Uh, Mike, said Sully, it's Halloween? Oops, said Mike. I guess I missed that memo. Hey, the boy called to his friends. Come check out these cool monster costumes. Mike and Sully shrank backward as a group of children approached them. Your costumes look so real, a little girl exclaimed. Can I touch the fur? She reached a hand towards Sully. Mike shrieked. No! Sully roared. Sully had forgotten how big and frightening he was. The kids screamed at the top of their lungs and ran away. But Mike and Sully were the most terrified of all. Let's get out of here, Mike shouted. He and Sully turned and ran. Mike pulled Sully into the closest bedroom and slammed the door behind them. Please, please, please let this door work, Mike said. What are the chances George is using this door, asked Sully. Slim, said Mike, but we have to try. Mike and Sully crossed their fingers. Then they opened the closet door and it worked. They walked back onto the scare floor at Monsters, Inc. Mike and Sully breathed a huge sigh of relief. They made it home safe. On the other side, they found George and Charlie. What are you guys doing coming through this door? asked George. I was just about to scare the kid on the other side. You saved us, said Sully. Our door was broken. Oops, Charlie said. We thought you left it on, on by accident and we shut it down. Sorry. It's okay, Mike said. We're back now. But whatever you do, do not go through that door. Why not? George asked. It's Halloween and there are kids everywhere, Sully explained. Mike shivered. Halloween is the scariest day ever. Trick or treat Halloween. It is almost Halloween. Halloween is almost here. Halloween is fun. On Halloween, you can be anything. On Halloween, you can be anything you want to be. This is Pat. Pat is busy. She is getting ready for Halloween. Pat wants to be a clown. A clown looks like this. 
This is Bob. Bob is busy. He is getting ready for Halloween. Bob wants to be a monster. A monster looks like this. This is Mary. Mary is busy. She is getting ready for Halloween. Mary wants to be a witch. A witch looks like this. This is Jeff. Jeff is busy. He is getting ready for Halloween. Jeff wants to be a ghost. A ghost looks like this. Ding dong, trick or treat. What do you want to be on Halloween?